are continuing. We're going to read a scripture and go with me to Acts chapter 16, verse 24, verse 20, verse 25 to 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loose. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for how you've been with us. We thank you for taking us through the midnight season of this pandemic. Thank you because we are now free and free indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, this moment, Lord, we ask for your more of your grace. Come speak to us. Let your word heal, deliver, set captives free, transform lives, save souls. Let your word be a blessing unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. This morning, we are sharing briefly on power, power for the zero hour. We're sharing briefly on power for the zero hour. Power for your zero hour. Today, you know I'm trusting God that at whatever level you are in, for many, for some, not saying it's looking glamorous, but they are at their zero hours. Life is not how life ought to be. But we are all not beautifully dressed and what? Smiling. Meanwhile, there are so many things going on. My prayer is that the Lord Almighty will make you and you in your zero hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am believing God for a sudden divine intervention in every zero situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Here we see a Paul and Silas you know, praising God and praying at midnight and suddenly there was a divine, a supernatural earthquake. My prayer is that there will be a supernatural earthquake in that challenging situation in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, my prayer is that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. In the name of Jesus. So we, we are seeing here the story of Paul and Silas in Acts 16, 25 to 26. And it reveals how God's power, God's power can be released in any situation. God's power can be released in any situation to turn it around. Hallelujah. Regardless of how hopeless it may seem, God can turn it around. Paul and Silas in prison and people think it's all over. But the Bible says they were praying and they were singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them praying and singing at midnight. Suddenly, there was a supernatural intervention. My prayer once again is that every zero hour, every midnight hour that you are experiencing, go will intervene. Amen. Go will intervene. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, hear me, hear me clearly. Every individual in life must come to a zero hour. Every individual encounters hours that are very low. They will, the most is the most you will come at one point. Jesus encountered a zero hour situation at the cross. Amen. Everybody, well, presidents, uh, the low and the high, the intelligent, the beautiful, the ugly, everybody, the rich, they all come with, they, they, they will come to a zero hour. I remember when, was it last year, the previous year, when you have one of the hurricanes, and one of the highlands pulled by one of the richest you know, men here. 
the whole island, he has to run into a bunker. The whole island, the Caribbean, the whole island was demolished. And the only way for him to survive was to go into a, a bunker. Everybody, everybody will come to a zero hour. Presidents come into zero hours. Elections, we saw the elections of the US. Hey, Amen. Presidents, when they want to lose power, it's like they behave abnormally. Amen. Amen. Everybody, everybody will come to a zero hour. Your beauty cannot save you. Your figure hate cannot save you. Your six packs cannot save you. Your degrees cannot save you. Your connections cannot save you. At your zero hour, even your nationality, your British nationality, your American nationality cannot save you. At your zero hour, even though you are the son of you know, of, of, of an influencer, it does not matter. At your zero hour, who you are counts nothing. Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, if you faint, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. My prayer is that you will not faint in your zero hour. In the name of Jesus. And I declare and I declare that you know, in your zero hour, you will come out shining. Amen. You will come out of it shining. Amen. You will not die in your zero hour. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We all as a people like counter zero hour, even in the last months. From March last year, we've all just living at the mercy of God. God have mercy. We're just all of us, every one of us, we're just living at the mercy of God. But you are surviving, and you continue to survive in the mighty name of Jesus. May you not die in your zero hour in the name of Jesus. Zero hour is the point at which we should pray to God and sing psalms and hymns and dance before God. Rejoice in all situations. Rejoice again. I said, Rejoice. Paul and Sanders, they were released, you know, after the zero hour. In that their darkest hour came a sudden divine intervention. Let me tell you quickly. Praise always brings joy. Unfailing. Amen. Praise brings joy. That is why you must be joyful even in your zero hours. Praise proclaims God's greatness. Hallelujah. As you give God praise, even in that zero hour, before you know it, it will turn around. May God turn things around for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If God did it for Paul and Silas, he can do it again. Amen. If God has turned your zero hours before, he can still do it again. And you will celebrate, you will testify of the goodness of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 27 verse 13 says, I remain confident of this. The NIV. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 3 verse 10 says, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with them. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your household. Yeah. It shall be well with your career. That project will be completed. That business, you will complete it. And you will make profit from it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 27 verse 13. The Passion Translation says, Yet I believe with all my heart that I will see again your goodness. Yahweh in the land of eternal life. Amen. Yet I believe with all my heart I will see again your goodness. Declare I will see again the goodness of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 3. It says when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion 
we were like those who dream. Then our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. The Lord will do great things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 14 verse 8, Romans 14 verse 8, the NIV. It says, if we live, we live for the Lord. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we die or we live, we belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. We go nowhere. Say we go nowhere. Say I go nowhere. Hallelujah. So quickly, three lessons at your zero hour and then we are done. Three lessons in your zero hour. Then we are done. Number one lesson, your zero hour can come unannounced. Your zero hour can what? It can come unannounced. Your zero hour can come unannounced. Acts 16, verse 11 to 15. Here we see Paul, the apostles, doing great wonders. Sailing. They've sailed for a long time. They've just landed and they and they encountered Lydia, Sister Lydia. She, they got her converted. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. She was baptized with her household. Look at it quickly. Acts 16. From verse 11. They had that encounter with Lydia. They have been sailing after many days. They came to Philippi. On Sabbath day, they went out for prayer, for worshiping God. And they had an encounter with this, sister, with this lady named Lydia. The verse 15 says, And when she and her household were baptized, she begged them, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded them. And after toiling in the sea, they came to land and they've gone for ministry and then they've got a soul and with a, you know, with a family for Jesus. Excited. From verse 16. Now it happened. Acts 16, 16 now to 24. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Now they continued ministry in that land. Then a certain slave girl came after them, seeing what they've done already with Lydia and her household. Who brought our masters, this slave girl brought our masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, this man are the servants of the most I God, it's not everyone that is clapping for you that is on your side. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, some they are clapping you to your trouble. Amen. May God expose all of them for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the, of, of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. After Paul and the disciples, apostles, going after them, anywhere they go, this girl will follow them and clap. These are the great men of God. These are the God-sent men for revival in this land. Clapping, shouting, announcing. Now, verse 18. This she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he cried out that very hour that when our masters and the, and the demon cried out that very hour and when our masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities and they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men were Jews exceedingly troubled our city and the teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten. 
with rust. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such as a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Hallelujah. This is the genesis of the story of Paul and Silas now praying and singing at midnight. Amen. Are you getting it now? Hallelujah. So now they are in the inner prison. Fasting, chained in and not just in the outer, 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 outer part of the prison. So that they can be secured. But the Bible says at midnight, they rose up. They started singing. They started praising God. And they started dancing. Hallelujah. No matter that zero hour you are in, you will praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, I, quickly, I remember those days, you know, when we had our zero hours. Pastor Andrew and I, we were just the two of us. The two of us, yes, the two of us. We just got married, you know, in April year 2005. By August, we've left the, U we've left the UK, you know, arrived. August 22nd, 23rd, the, you know, the U.S. Started my law program. You know, we came back in November 26, 27. Viva, passed Viva the next week. Did the convocation. The next day, we flew back to the U.S. And then started trouble. Started trouble. I couldn't write my law exams. Trouble everywhere. Didn't know where these things were coming from. Couldn't sleep. I have to write exams in church. Pastor coming to pick me every night for prayer. Amen. Every night I must be in church. Every night. The pastor will come. Brother, it's time now. Let's go. Before you die in my church. Amen. He will come and pick us and we'll go to church to pray. Every night. It was battle for life. Zero hour. At your zero hour, your degrees cannot save you. At your zero hour, those eyelids cannot save you. Amen. Those pancakes cannot, you don't need them. Hallelujah. Those eye shoes makes no meaning. That wonderful suit cannot. Amen. Am I talking? So we're in church every, every night. Every night. And then. It was getting too much. One night, managed to come back and relax. Before I could sleep, this all over again. Trouble. I said, ah, oh, Lord, this is too much. Now, knelt down. Knelt down by my bedside. John 14, 14 came to mind. So I just, I, I opened the Bible, John 14, 14. And, and, I, and the Bible says, if you ask anything in my name, the Lord will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I just read that scripture, John 14, 14. And I said, by my best side, Pastor Andrew sleeping. We were just two. So I just knelt down. And I said, Lord, show me this, where this is coming from. Let me know the source of this problem. So that I can fire the arrow. Amen. It's one thing to be carrying a rifle. And you don't know where the enemy is. <laughs> Amen. But Lord, show me this. Show me this. John 14, 14. I just read it. I knelt by the best side. I just read it. John 14, 14. I opened the Bible. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ah, if I ask anything, quickly I ask, Lord, show me where this trouble is coming from. I closed my Bible. I went back to bed. Within one minute, less than one minute, just less than one minute, I saw a naked woman just want to bounce on me. And I jumped out of my bed. I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I've seen the source. I've seen the source. Are you for power this morning? Are you for power this morning? And by the next day, of course, I didn't sleep again throughout the whole night. You will not sleep again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There is time to sleep and there is time to be awake. 
By the next day, I rushed straight to the pastor. I know you'll be in the office. Went to the pastor. Pastor, sorry, very sorry I've been disturbing you. I've known the source. Amen. I've what? I've known the source. And you know I've said it. There's no party in the jungle. Amen. And the pastor said, tell me, what's, what, brother, what's happening? I said, I've known the source. The source, this is what happened. I went to bed. I was troubled. And I woke up. I read my Bible. God you know, directed me to John 14, 14. And I read it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I asked the Lord, show me the source. And I just went back to bed. And this naked person, Jewish person, wanted to pass on me. And I know the person. The person is your being. The head of the choir. The head of prayers. I know that she's my, my flatmate. So anytime pastor is picking us, she's joining the vehicle to the church with us. You know the, the you know student apartment? You have Pastor Andrew and I one room, this person one room, the owner of the house one room. So anytime the the the, the pastor come to pick us, she too will join as as a, as a, as a, as partners or as as prayer warriors, head of prayer in the church. So everything will reveal whatever, whatever she's hearing everything. Amen. Pastor said, he, "Ah, brother Akbo, this is serious. From the UK to the US to destroy my church, I said it is well. I've just explained how it happened. Amen. This is how what it happened. So I don't know how." I don't know how, but this is how it happened. God showed me a scripture. I read the scripture, and I said, Lord, show me where this is coming from. The next minute, this is what I saw. So I don't know. I'm not part of, I just, I'm just telling what happened. Amen. So from that day, okay, I will call the sister. The sister is head of administration in the other office. Bring her in. Pastor, brother, Apple, say what you said just now. I said, you are right, sir. There's no hiding. I said, sister, this is what happened. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So, Pastor Love is a PA. This brother just came from UK. Two, three months, want to now bring confusion here. So now there is distance, long distance. We can't trust Pastor Akbo. We can't this brother Akbo. Be afar before you destroy my church. <laughs> Call everybody something else. <laughs> Amen. So now we are now on our own. We are now what? On our own, come to church, you are, you are careful, you are, on your, you are on your own. Amen. So, at midnight, we will get up. Now, we can't come to church again. At midnight, we will get up, we will go to the park. We will walk to the park. On our way, we carry stones, we pick stones. <laughs> Amen. We don't know what to do again. Zero hour. At zero hour, you are not normal. Am I talking now? At your zero hour, you can't be normal. Amen. You don't look for English to pray. Amen. Like David that picked Goliath. I said, well, David's face is Goliath. This is a Goliath. He picked stone, so I picked stone too. I carried anointing oil. As I'm going to the park, I anointed the oils. And when I got to the park, that is the free area. Nobody is there. I will roll the stones. Midnight, at midnight. And I will throw the stones. Nobody is there. I said, these stones will strike the Goliath. That is dubbing my peace in this land. And we're doing that. We're doing that. And the Lord have mercy. <laughs> Amen. You want to hear stories? Let me write down. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so just to give you one instance. Okay, now we are on our own. The head of choir, so she will bring all the girls around to the house. They came in, one, two, three, students, 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 many of them, they will come in and have their jollof rice and dodos and hosting them. So by this time now, in the house, our food is now in our room. In Africa, the first thing is your food. <laughs> Amen. You can't leave food in the common kitchen again. Uh, so they come, they will eat. When, they are, when she's in the parlor, we are, not, we are in our room. We can't, be, we can't meet again at the same time in the living room. So one night they came, gathered all these young girls and boys, having the love rice and their stuff in the living room. So we had in our room. From early evening, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., they were having their 
chats, choir meet, enjoying themselves. Nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. They started going, dropping them. They've gone. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. A car was still at the car park. Still on. I said, who is there? Three, four. I said, no, no, this is too much. A brother was still around. And by this time, I've been moving around the city. Say, Lord, if you are God, if you showed me this, just to confirm that this is true, let this person dance naked in this land. Amen? At this time, I don't look at face. I pray some serious prayers. If to show that I didn't, what? Manufacture the story of my own. Lord, let this person dance naked in this land. And that to save God's church. Hallelujah. So that night, by 3 a.m., 3 p.m., 3 a.m., a car was still human in the car park. And this was the head of Usher, who helped in driving people, church driver that dropped people. He has dropped the students and back. But he was still around by 3 a.m. And I said, this is wrong. This is wrong. What is he doing? He will have gone home too. And so I came out. I became bold. I came out. Came out to the door. Opened my door. Went to the car park. Opened the door of the car. Brother, what are you doing there? Brother, shirt is down. Amen. Brother, shirt is what? Sister is there. Brother is sweating. Brother, what are you doing 3 a.m. in the car park? Oh, I'm sweating. With your sister, with your shirt down. Amen. Next morning, brother, I quote your pastor. Pastor, this is what I saw. If you like, don't believe this one again. This one, I saw it in the physical. Amen. This is not what? <laughs> I saw something. No, no, this one is the physical. Call I again to ask. Call the person again what? To, for the second time. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Your zero hours come. I can go on and on. Your zero hours come unannounced. Hallelujah. In short, he made the brother who had a beautiful car. One day, that brother rose up one day. He went to his car. The car was, there was a thread around the old car. Before he knew it, the brother lost his car. The brother lost his ass. The brother, she now brought the brother to her, 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 her own apartment to be a squatter. The brother became a squatter. Lost his job. Hallelujah. Oh, you're not ready for power. You're not what? Ready for that. Hallelujah. May God deliver you from that zero hour situation. In the name of Jesus. Your zero hours come unannounced. Number two, quickly, let me run. I'm not yet to tell stories too much. <laughs> Amen. Number two, I'm just trying to let you know that you will encounter midnight hours. Amen. You will encounter zero hours. But who do you look up to in your zero hour? Do you just take life just like that? Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang hymns at midnight. Number two, and I'm believing God, I'm saying they will continue this week midnight prayers. For some of you, you need that for, for your deliverance. Amen? Number two, your zero hour is a time of hopelessness. Zero hours are times of what? Hopelessness. Your money cannot save you. You may be rich. Your money cannot get you out. Mark chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be ill and she will live. Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now, from 25 to 26. Now, a certain woman, so Jairus' daughter was sick at the point of death. They've come to call Jesus. Now, Jesus was his, is in, on his way to the home of Jairus. On their way, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. 
She has suffered many things for many physicians, for many physicians, many doctors. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. At your zero hour, your money cannot save you. She had money, but she spent all her money, but no cure. Now, the story continues. Back to Jairus' daughter from 34 to 36. And when he got to the house, Jesus, he said to her, daughter, you know, just for the woman, the woman came, the issue of blood touched his garment, she was made old. Then from 39 to 43, when he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep and cry? This child is not dead. On his way, after he has encountered the woman with the issue of blood, while he was doing that healing, she came to touch his hem of his garment, and there was some time spent there. They came back to tell Jairus that bother Jesus no more because your daughter is dead. Amen. And they announced that to Jesus. He got to know that they've come to tell Jairus that the daughter is dead. Jesus said, no, she's sleeping. I'm coming there to wake her up. So when he rushed down quickly, he didn't allow anyone to disturb him. He rushed down to the house. When he made his way there, there was commotion. The child is not dead, he said, but sleeping. And they ridiculed Jesus. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. 41. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita Kumai, which is translated, little girl, I said to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. And then, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given to her to eat. Hallelujah. So now, Jairus, if you know who he is, it means an enlightened one. Jairus, the name Jairus means someone that is informed. Is informed. Jairus was looking after the synagogue. It's like the COO, chief operating officer of the synagogue. It's like the, it's the one in charge. It's the one that will say, you go and do opening prayer, you do opening prayer, you do this. It's the one in charge of that. He was looking after the synagogue. That means he had influence. The synagogues were built by the Pharisees that were not believing in Jesus. So ordinarily, Jairus ought not to believe in Jesus. So, but now his daughter was, no, is dead. Now at this time, he didn't bother whether I believe in Jesus or not. I know this man can heal. At your zero hour, you break protocols. Because if for going to Jesus, he will lose his position. Because those that gave him the synagogue to look after didn't believe in Jesus. Amen. May you be able to break protocols. In the mighty name of Jesus. I remember when our young boy was in the hospital for six months. You know, one particular day we, we came, I came with, the, with, with, with our two other children, John and Phoebe, from school run. And we just got to the hospital. And here was is not, not the way it ought to be. About seven, five, how many, nearly all the, about seven doctors were there, nurses were there, all kinds of experts were there, and it's like we sent John and Phoebe out of the place, get out of this place. And they were, I just came, I saw doctors, I just held my son, and I said, come back to life! Shouted on top of my voice with all the doctors and whatever. I don't care to know. There are no protocols any longer. This is a zero hour. At the zero hour, there is no protocols. You break what? In that hospital, I had a prayer room. <laughs> Amen. I had a prayer room. I, the, the nurses, they give me my prayer room. They know that I will go there. We didn't miss one, one prayer session. It's a prayer room. Morning, morning prayer session, that was guaranteed. Then the evenings, I, they, I never want they missed. I had a prayer room. Those are common rooms. There's no common room. It's for God. Amen. I drive every other person out. 
In short, if the world there's no, if it's occupied, they will look for another common room for me, another prayer room for me. What do they call it? What do they call it? Is it what do they call it? Huh? Quiet room, whatever. Quiet room. They will look for one for me in the hospital. And I will have my time there. Hallelujah. At zero hours, you don't look at men and their faces. You do what you ought to do. May you be able to do what you ought to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, finally, quickly. Your zero hour is the time for betting. It's the time for a new song. It's the time for a turnaround. And it comes if only you can believe. If only you can believe. Your zero hour is the time for turnaround. I will share you just, just one story. For those of, for, of us in the church, we have heard our story. We were to get married. We were to get married, Pastor Andrew and I, in the UK here, yeah, Bradford. Three weeks to our wedding came a big problem. We've booked all, we've done invitation cards, we've booked everything. Three weeks, we went to the registry. You must inform the registry, marrying the British national. And they said, not just informing them that we need an approval from the home office. And the approval can only come if it's very fast, 13 weeks. And yet, it's three weeks to our wedding. And I said, Lord, what is this? Came back home. We applied. Three weeks we have. My sisters in Australia and their family, they booked flights. But today we say, everybody, if you want to go somewhere, you know, by that time, you, you have booked flights. People have taken days off work. Friends from U.S., friends from across nations, they've all booked their time out. Yeah, and abroad, everybody. And yet we have a big problem. We applied. The pastors now, we are not saying, is God in this? Again, another, we are left on our own. One week gone, more two weeks. Two weeks gone, more one week. And by this time, wife is crying. <laughs> and I am crying silently at midnight. <laughs> Amen. At midnight. I've then, then you can download all the Holy Ghost services. So I, I've gone to my PhD office. I've downloaded all the, as many Holy Ghost services. From let somebody shout hallelujah from the beginning to the end. Then, yeah, you can read the transcript. Then the transcript, you read some 20 pages, some 40 pages. There's no YouTube. Amen. There's no what? YouTube, you download the transcript. I read, I read all. I was looking for a word, a word, a word. I wanted, I wanted a word. I needed a word to stand on. I needed a word. So I was downloading transcripts, transcripts of messages. Then one night, the Lord showed that the Jew to me. He was wearing a white robe. That was the third night to our wedding now. He was wearing the wife's robe and he came and he asked the secretary, Oh, secretary, there's a letter, there's, there's a fax message. Fax then. There's a fax message for Brother Hakpo. Please let me have the fax message to give to him. And he took it from her and handed over the fax message to me. And I woke up at midnight. And I said, This is it. This is the approval. I ran down from my, where I was staying, at, at the Catholic chaplain's opposite the university. Came down to the door. Midnight, I thought the postman would have delivered something. There was nothing. God gave us three scriptures. Jeremiah 20, Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? He gave me another scripture. Both of us. God, by then, I told Pastor Andrea, Sister Andrea then, Go and read your Bible. Come with three scriptures. I go and read my Bible. 
come with three scriptures so that we can stand on the word. And we both came with the same three scriptures. Jeremiah 32, 27. Luke 18, 27. What is impossible with men is possible with God. John 14, 27. Peace I give with you. Peace I live with you. Not as the world give it. Therefore, do not faint. Do not let your heart be troubled. We both had brought those three scriptures. She pasted those scriptures on her side in her own room by the bed. I was standing on those scriptures. Then came that encounter that night. That night, no, no mail. The day came, postman came, no, no mail. The next day, Thursday, to the wedding, no mail. Friday, by this time, my sisters have arrived from, from Australia. Family, they've come. Our family have they've arrived. Father, grandfather, they've come from Northern Ireland. Amen. Friends started coming on Fridays. My friends have come. My international friends from Russia, from Netherlands, they've come. They've all flown in. And we had an option to have it in an Anglican church. So quietly, we went and we were able to secure an Anglican church. All saints. But that wasn't our, our desire. And we said, God, for me, God, if you are in this, we want that later. Approval before that Saturday. This was Friday. There was nothing. On Saturday morning, it was wedding day. So we now brought our wedding one hour back from the official one that everybody knows. So we can have the wedding in an Anglican church. Morning hour, I've gone to church with, with the Reverend Father in the place, about seven, nine of us internationals in that house. I'm waiting there for my wife to come. That was when he saw my friend that came. He had come early morning, but I should to help to be one of the groomsmen. And he came to have his clipper, his air clipper, went to where he was lodging, came back to drop the air clipper. And that was when he met a DHL man at the door while there was nobody in the house. I said, okay, this parcel is for Apple. And he took it and came straight to the wedding hall. And this was the approval. Hallelujah. <laughs> May you rise up, church. At your zero hour, what are you looking at for? Your zero hour, what is, are you just crying helplessly? Are you just there <laughs> calling everybody <laughs> that you think that can make things happen? Or you are looking up to God. Paul and Silas, they looked up to God. They sang praises and they, and, they, and, and they prayed unto God. You're going to pray one prayer this morning. You say, Father, intervene in my zero hours of life. For most of you, you are already in zero hours. And you are taking it lightly. If you don't rise up now, you may not rise up again. <laughs> if you don't rise up now to tackle... That situation now, no, the end won't be palatable. Why not say, oh Lord, my father, my father, arise and intervene. In this my situation, oh Lord, arise and intervene. Let that be your prayer.